Hi, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Borgie here. Um, I will be your instructor for this uh, Guidance 507 class, Opening Doors to Student Success. And I'm excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me and for deciding to be a part of this course. Um, I've been teaching this course since, I believe, 2007 when the program began. And um, so I'm actually, I think, the only original instructor left from the beginning. And so I've been teaching this class the longest, and so I do have the most experience, so um, that's cool. Also, um, because I've been teaching this class for such a long time, I feel that um, I really developed it into something that uh, you will get a lot out of, and that will benefit you, not just right now, but in your future as well. My goal as an instructor this semester is to teach you about several different types of things. Um, one of them is going to be study skills. Um, one of them is going to be time management um, and also like life management, just how to manage everything that's happening and going on in your life. And then we're also going to talk about motivation and goal setting um, and maybe things that are preventing you from setting good goals or preventing you from following through or acting on your goals. So uh, we'll be talking about a lot of um, kind of deeper emotional issues that may be getting in the way of your ability to press forward and succeed. Um, most of us are capable of being successful in college and the things that are holding us back are, um, you know, things that we can adjust and change um, because we can always get better at things if we practice. And so some of these things are just, you know, maybe you have some bad habits in place that you need to change or whatever. But as far as things go for this semester, I just want you to know that no matter who you are or what's been going on with you, you have a fresh start here with me. Like I, I don't know what happened to you before or why you're here um, or what ended up um, happening to get you into this program. And to be honest, um, for me, it's not important because I am curious about who you are right now. So as you're entering this class and you begin the class, um, I'm not judging you based on your past or what's happened before. I don't think that anybody um, who is in this class, I don't think that you do not have what it takes to succeed. In fact, I think every single person that is watching this video has the ability to succeed in college and in life. And it's just sometimes we need a little bit of, I guess, self-analysis and we need time to take a step back and look at what we're doing and how we're doing things to see if we can adjust something to kind of work better for us. So sometimes we just have bad habits in place that need some adjustment. So I'm here to help you with that. And I'm also here to teach you, you know, just maybe some study strategies and things that might be useful and helpful to you. It's important that you watch this course intro video uh, from start to finish because it has really a lot of important information about the class that you're not going to get anywhere else. And you may notice that throughout the term, um, a lot of the videos that I've recorded, I've recorded at other times, like not specifically for this section of this class, but this particular video is specifically for this section of this class and, the, and goes over the current situation that we're in with COVID and the current situation for this particular class. So it's very important that you watch the whole thing. I'm going to start out by talking a little bit about Canvas glitches because um, there's some known Canvas glitches that have been happening over the past year or so that have not been ironed out. And I want to tell you about them so that you don't run into those problems and you know how to work around them. Okay. So the first one is Canvas times out. So if you're working on an assignment in Canvas and you walk away, if you walk away for too long, and, and I don't know exactly what the length of time is, but I think it's somewhere about five minutes. Like if you if you don't do anything for five minutes, um, Canvas actually times out, but it doesn't tell you it's timed out right away. So you'll go back and look. it'll look like everything's fine and you'll keep working and typing away. And then when you go to submit that assignment, it will time out at that point and be like, you're not connected to Canvas or Canvas timed out and you'll lose all of your work that you've been working on. So what people do to kind of work around this is they work on um, doing their work outside of Canvas. So they'll take the assignment and they'll do it in like a word processing program like Microsoft Word, like Pages, 
and like Google Docs. So those um, are three word processing programs that are probably the most common ones people use. So those programs don't time out. And in fact, Google Docs kind of automatically saves stuff as you go. I don't know if Pages does that too. I think it does. Uh, Microsoft Word, you do have to save things periodically or you might lose them. But in Canvas, the timeout happens really fast and it, it, it looks like everything's fine, which is really misleading. So that's why I'm letting you know that if you're going to do your work in Canvas, you really should think about doing it somewhere else. And then you can always copy and paste that back into the text box or you can just upload your document. That leads me to the next thing, which is uploading documents. So when you're uploading documents to Canvas, and some of you may already know this because you're familiar with Canvas, but if you're not, this is very important. You must upload all items that you want to appear on the assignment at the same exact time. You cannot, like other programs, upload one thing, wait for it to upload, and then see it there, and then upload the next thing. Whatever you upload most recently, will bump out anything that you've already uploaded. And so it's very important in Canvas that you upload everything at the same time. And you do that by you upload the first thing and then underneath it says, you know, you can choose another or add another item. So you want to click on the add another item and then browse and find that item and upload that. And if you have additional items, you want to keep doing that. I think there's like a I think it's two gigabytes is the maximum amount that you can upload at once. But none of the assignments that I'm going to be giving you are going to be bigger than that. So you should be able to upload all of your photos or all of your things. Um, one of the first assignments that we're going to do in Canvas uh, involves you uploading uh, multiple items at once, and that's purchasing your books. So you do have to purchase a couple books for the class. Um, I actually will have a video um, probably in the assignment on um, how to get your books that shows you how to go find the particular books for this class. I would like you to either A, order the book, um, and it's called On Course by Skip Downing, and it has to be the eighth edition, the eighth edition, okay? Um, and I do have photos of the book in the, on the syllabus, which is available to you right away. You can go to, to the course introduction section and find the syllabus. I promise you that um, the fastest way to get the book is to download the, um, the online book, okay? So the online book is available through Amazon. It's also available through the Chafee Bookstore. And it's also available through your website called Chegg. C-H-E-G-G dot -G com. And I will have links to that in um, to that in the assignment. So you can kind of take a look at the assignment. You'll see the video that shows you how to go find your books online and how to purchase them. The reason I want you to get the online book is because you'll have access to everything right away. It's also the cheapest option for you. And um, you can just do a rental for a couple of months. And that will save you a lot of money. If you are the kind of person that absolutely has to have the paper version of the book, I want you to order it from the bookstore for pickup and go pick it up because then you'll get it right away and you'll have it, you will need it for the first week for the first assignments that you're going to do. Because this is an eight week class, um, everything is quick and we don't have a lot of time to mess around. And I, we do have to get through all of the curriculum. Just because it's eight weeks doesn't mean that you're learning any less than you would in an 18 week class. So you're going to notice that, yeah, there's a lot of homework every week. And that's because in my regular classes, there's a lot of homework in the 18-week session. There's a lot of homework and a lot of assignments. And the reason is because the more assignments there are, actually the better for you because that will increase your grade. As long as you're doing all the assignments and um, if there's more assignments, there's more chances for you to do well. And if you do miss one, there's that's going to take away less of your grade than if there's, only, if there's only five assignments and you miss one assignment, that's a huge chunk of your grade just for missing one assignment. If there's 30 assignments. If you miss one assignment, that's like one thirtieth of your grade. You see what I'm saying here? So the reason why there's so many assignments is because I want you to be successful. So the assignments are easy, but I've chosen them specifically. They're not just busy work. They're work that I think is going to help you to develop yourself as a person and as a student and as, um, I guess, a motivated person who wants to do well in their life 
as a person who sets goals and achieves goals. Um, all the assignments are designed to help you with the skills and strategies that you need to be successful, not just in college, but also in life. Okay, so there's one more thing about Canvas that I need to explain to you before I move on, and that is um, Canvas does not work well with Google Doc links or Dropbox links. There is a certain way to do it, but it's not the intuitive way that you do it with everything else. And because it's so complex, I have just decided that I'm tired of messing around with that and having students lose points because they're struggling with Google Docs. So I have implemented a rule, no Google Docs links. If you're going to create assignments in Google Docs, then you need to save them as a Microsoft Word document and upload them that way. Or you need to just copy and paste the whole document into the text box for the assignment and then upload it. Please do not include a link. If you do, I will not be able to access your, um, your file uh, because you do have to do a certain thing with link sharing and it is not intuitive and it's not something that um, I just don't want to deal with it because I've had so many students in the past just really struggle with it. It just doesn't work well with Canvas. And because of that, it's just easier to just not use that. So no links from Google Docs or Dropbox or any other place to turn in an assignment. Um, there will be zero times where I ask you to turn in an assignment using a link to Google Docs or a link to Dropbox or a link to anything in this particular section of this class. And so if you are going to use Google Docs, that's fine, but just copy and paste your work from Google Docs into the text box, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, if you do try to upload a Google document and I cannot open it, you will receive zero points on that assignment, and I will not let you make it up. Um, and that's because I'm telling you right now that I do not accept assignments in that way. And if you are doing everything you're supposed to do, which is watching this video, then you will know that and you won't do that and so you won't lose any points. And if you do turn in your item with a Google Doc and you lose points, you will learn rather quickly to not do that <laughs> because it doesn't work out with Canvas. Okay, so the next thing that's really important that you need to know about this particular semester is that there is something called the syllabus contract that you are going to be required to sign right away. So the way I have your Canvas set up for this week is I would like you to, when you get into Canvas and you get into our course, on, I guess it would be your, your left-hand side, you will see a drop, well, it's not a drop-down, it's just a list of items. There's a section called Modules. I want you to click on Modules, and when you do that, it should open up the two modules that are open for this week. The first one is the course introduction, and the second one is week one stuff. And both of those items are things that you have to go through and complete this week. Now, the first section, the course introduction, you do have to complete everything in order. Um, and I, because I want you to read all the information and go through all the information because a lot of students, and honestly, including myself, like when I was a student, I remember um, I had online classes just like you do. And... I would just go onto the online class and I would see items and I would just try to figure out, okay, where's my assignments? I just want to try to do those really fast. I don't want to go through the actual material if I don't have to. So I would try to like take shortcuts and just um, skip over important stuff just to get to the part where I fill out the form to get the grade part, right? So a lot of students do that. So the reason why I have things set up the, the way they are this week is so that you can't do that. You do have to go through all the information in order um, to move on to the next section. So you'll notice you have to go through each thing. Now at the bottom of some of the pages, you'll notice it says mark as done and there's a little circle down there. You have to click on that circle in order to move on to the next thing. So when you see the whole thing in module view, you'll see parts of it that are open and accessible to you and parts that are closed. And the parts that are closed can only be opened when you go through and mark as done at the very bottom of each page, each thing. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, I will have a video that shows you how to mark things as done somewhere in uh, the course introduction. I haven't, I haven't actually recorded and placed that video yet, but it will be somewhere in the course introduction for you. Um, essentially, you need to mark those things as done and then move on. So one of the things that you must do to move on 
is to complete the syllabus contract. The syllabus contract requires that you read the contract or watch the video that explains what's in the contract. And then you'll need to follow a really um, in-depth series of instructions to digitally sign that contract. Once you digitally sign the contract using DocuSign, you can upload it to the assignment and turn it in. Once you have turned in that assignment, you will be able to move on to the next thing. So for that particular assignment, you do have to complete it before you can move on to the additional items. There is another assignment this week that I wanted to kind of just mention to you, and that is uh, the Student Choices Self-Assessment and Journal 3, they, they are together. And so the assessment is actually in your book in Chapter 1. So you'll have to have the book in order to do that assessment. That is why I want you to get the online version of your book, or I should say the ebook version, because it's not necessarily online. You can download it once you purchase it. And again, I will have a video up in the assignment that's, um, you know, purchase your textbooks. Uh, so you can see how to purchase the textbooks. I'll show you the different places to go in a video. So it's easy for you and you can clearly see, okay, this is where I need to go if I want to get the book this way. Or if I want to get it this way, I need to go here. Um, but you do need the book right away, first thing. So again, as I said, if you need, if you're one of those people that must have a hard copy or paper, you know, a paper copy of the book, the only way I want you to get it is if you have Amazon Prime and it's going to come overnight, like you can overnight it or you can get it here this week so you can complete that assignment out of your book. Or if you can arrange with the bookstore for a pickup. Um, if they mail it to you, sometimes it does take longer than a week, um, just from past experiences with students who have ordered the book through the bookstore and had it mailed to them. They do a pickup option, so you can like roll up to the bookstore and wait outside and they'll bring it to you, or you can, um, I don't know if you can go in this term or not, but if it's available, you can go in and pick them up um, as long as you have your mask and everything. I'm not sure the exact procedures for this semester for the bookstore, but you'll have to, uh, I guess, call and find out um, if that's the way you want to do it. But the easiest way is to just purchase the books um, in ebook format, so you have both of them. Um, there's another book for the class called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. It's a very inexpensive book, um, but you will need it. However, the more important book that the assignment is out of this week is the On Course book by Skip Downing. So, you want to make sure you get on course right away, right away. Um, for the seven habits one, if it comes next week, that's okay. But on course, you need right now. Okay, so um, there's an assignment or a set of assignments that I need to speak with you about that are very, very important because they are worth half of your grade. That's right, half your grade. So half of your grade is all these assignments that you're going to be doing in the class. The other half of your grade are success center assignments. There are three of them. The first one is called Mindset, the second one is called Learning Strategies, and the third one is called Time Management. You will be completing these assignments at the, I think it's called the Business and Technology Success Center. And the Business and Technology Success Center is, um, I will link everything for you in an assignment for each one of those but I do have the general procedures already up for you in the course introduction. Um, you will need, let me turn my phone off here because I think I accidentally left it on. Um, you will need, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, success. Okay, you will need your, uh, your ID card to um, complete the success center activities. And so if you don't have an ID card right now, there is a procedure through admissions and records and I do have that linked into the procedures for the success center that's located in the course introduction. You will need Zoom to attend these meetings and you don't have to do them in person, you do them um, through Zoom, which is a video conferencing app if you haven't used that before. Uh, we do use that a lot at Chafee and I use that for personal meetings. So if you say you need to meet with me at any point during the semester, we can link up via Zoom so we can be face to face even though we can't be in person. So um, you need to make sure that you go to the course introduction and download Zoom. You need to make sure that you have a student ID card. 
even if you have just the number, that's not okay. You actually need the card. And uh, they do have a procedure to get the card to you and everything, um, even in the situation we're in where we're all completely online. You don't have to physically go there, but you do have to get the ID card. So please make sure that you get your ID card from admissions if you do not have one so you can complete the success in our activities. Now the success in our activities, like I said, they're worth half of your grade. But if you only completed the success in our activities and you didn't do any additional assignments, that's still only half of your grade, and only half of your grade is still an F. So, Because I've had students who thought, well, if I just complete the success in our activities, then I'm good. I don't have to do the rest of the work. And that is not the case. You still have to do the rest of the work. So obviously, if you want an A in the class, you have to do at least 90% of the work with perfect score, right? Um, but most people don't get a perfect score on everything. So the best way to ensure that you get an A in the class is to complete all of your work, um, both the success in our activities and the other assignments that are a part of the class. If you miss one success center activity, it automatically will um, take you down one letter grade. So like if by the end of the semester you were gonna get an A and you missed one success center, you're gonna end up with a B. If you were gonna get a B and you missed a success center, you would end up with a C. You see what I'm saying? Um, if you miss two success centers, you will not be able to pass the class because that you'll be missing so many points at that point. That would be very difficult to um, complete enough to actually pass the class. So I do not recommend missing any of these success in our assignments. Additionally, because I want you to get these done so much, um, I offer 40 points of additional extra credit if you complete the success center during the first week that it's offered. And I do that for all three of them. So if you do mindset during the first week that it's offered, you'll get 40 points plus the 500 points that that assignment is worth. If you do learning strategies in the first week, you'll get 40 points plus the 500 points that that assignment's worth. If you do time management in the first week, you get 40 points extra plus the 500 it's worth. Those assignments total are worth 1,500 points. The rest of the assignments in the class are worth 1,500 points-ish, okay? They're worth just a little bit more than um, just the success centers. So if you look at the syllabus, the course syllabus, you will see the point breakdown towards the end of the syllabus. I think it's like if you go to the very end and go back a couple pages, it's like right there. And what it does is it breaks down all the points that are in the class. You'll see that there are 400-ish points of extra credit in the class. And I've had students who kind of don't like that. They're like, we don't understand why there's all this extra credit. I have people complain about the amount of extra credit in the class, which I think is ridiculous. But listen up, this is why. Okay, so I do not accept late work. I do not take late work. And this is because in real life, if you miss something, you miss it. You don't get to make it up, okay? Like if you have a job and you miss a presentation, um, once that presentation time is over, like someone else is either going to do it for you or you're going to get fired from that job. You're not going to get a chance to do it again. You know what I'm saying? So in this class, I try to set it up so it's like a real life situation. You will not get to make up the, those points. Um, but you can check out some of these extra credit assignments and use those to make up the points. Now the real reason I have 400 points of extra credit um, besides just what I just said is that I have those success in our assignments that are worth 500 points, right? So it, let's say you missed a success center. If you did, and you did every single extra credit assignment that was available, you could almost make up that one. So you could almost make up one success center. That's why I have those points there. Just in case somebody does miss the success center for a legitimate reason, maybe they, you know, maybe something happened, whatever, um, that extra credit could help them to pass the class even if they missed that big assignment. You know what I'm saying? But the way I have the extra credit set up is the assignments happen throughout the term. So there's extra credit starting the first week. And there's a lot of extra credit towards the end of the semester that I try to load it more towards the end. But since it's throughout, if you're not completing success or if you're not completing extra credit from the beginning, then um, you know there may not be 400 points of extra credit left by the time you go to do the extra credit. Does that make sense? So I would say if you wanna do well in the class, the best thing you could do for yourself is do the regular assignments, but also do the extra credit as insurance, just in case.
you know, just in case something happens, just in case you do miss something, you have some insurance. Now, the extra credit assignments are a little more in depth in terms of you have to do a lot more to get the same amount of points. And so, and that's kind of how life is too. So like when you're making up stuff, like let's say you're out sick because, you know, you were sick and you come back to work and you notice your pile of work is still sitting there and you still have to do it, right? But there's also additional work that's still coming at you. And so, yeah, it, with extra credit, it's going to be a little bit harder because I'm trying to mimic that real life situation of if you did have to step away and you came back, you would have, you know, if you... <laughs> if you want to do well, you've got to do those extra credits to make it up and they are a little more involved and they do require a little bit more work than a regular assignment, if that makes sense. Um, in this class, we have a lot of discussions as well and those discussions are designed to engage you with other students. During those discussions, I really expect that you are respectful to one another because we're going to be bringing up some serious you know, stuff like about our lives. Um, and we have to be respectful of one another and obviously, you know, not get down on anybody or be rude or, or mean or you guys, I've never had that problem ever. No one's ever been rude. No one's ever done anything like terrible. But I just like to remind people that, you know, just because we're online doesn't mean that, um, you know, we that gives us a license to just say whatever we want or do whatever we want or Think about how you would treat somebody if you were sitting in the room with them. What would you say to them? And say it like that. Um, just because we are not in the same room doesn't mean that we uh, shouldn't be giving each other the same respect that we would be um, if we were sitting in the same room. Okay, so let's see. One of the most important things in the class is, is following instructions and as an instructor, one thing that I've noticed over the years with students and honestly with myself too, is I notice that not everybody takes the time to read the in instructions fully because they think they already know what they're supposed to do. So for that reason, um, I just kind of mix things up a lot. Um, my instructions are often different. So like one assignment you might do and read the instructions and then if you think the next one's going to be the exact same, uh, and you try to just do it the same way, you're going to end up losing points because I do try to change it up a little bit. So sometimes I'll say respond to two other students and then another time I'll say respond to four other students or just respond to one other student. So you really have to read the instructions every time and I just want you to get into the habit of doing that. And I'm not accusing you of anything. Like maybe you're the kind of person that always reads the instructions and then in, this, in that case, this part of the lecture isn't for you. But um, for those of you who, you know, like get a new iPhone and look at the manual and go, I should read that, but I'm not going to, maybe you should read that. Um, but my instructions um, are kind of long and detailed because I want to make sure you get everything. And if you do have an issue or you're not sure, or you don't understand, please text me. So that leads me to the next thing, which is I'm always available for you guys. Okay. I will set aside time for you. Um, we can meet, we can talk. Um, I, I don't mind doing a phone meeting over the phone. Um, I don't mind doing a Zoom meeting where we're face to face. Um, you know, I don't mind, you know, just emailing back and forth. Um, and I don't mind texting. So uh, my email is my first and last name. So it's A-M-Y period. And then my last name, B-O-R-G-H-I at Yahoo, not Yahoo, at Yahoo, <laughs> at chafee.edu. Okay, and then my phone number is 909-224-1204. And I actually prefer texting. Um, if you're going to contact me via phone, um, I would prefer you text me first. If you do wanna do a phone call, that's fine, but just text me first and then we can set up a time to, to talk. Um, I do have other responsibilities. I have, a, I have other jobs, um, other things that I'm doing besides just teaching this class. And so I may not always be available to pick up the phone when you call me um, or when you text me, but I will get back to you as soon as I am available. Um, I do have a job where I work during the day sometimes, um, usually during like regular school hours. And then I get home around three or four in the afternoon. So if you... Um, text me in the middle of a weekday and you don't hear back right away, you hear back from me, uh, you know, towards the end of the day of the work day. Um, I, and I promise I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, 
things that people like to talk about with me, just so you kind of know, like the sort of things that, you know, I talk with students about, um, I talk about students about goal setting. So when we get to that section, a lot of students really do want to talk about the goals that they're setting for themselves and they want to kind of run them by me and see what I think of them. And maybe I can give suggestions on ways to break down those goals into smaller pieces, which is something that we talk about. Um, sometimes people like to just let me know if they have a disability or something that may affect their ability to do well in the class or if they're going through something, you know, that's, that's causing, you know, really strong emotions that are, are making them, you know, have a struggle with focusing on school. I'm happy to talk about that. Um, career issues. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a wealth of information about career, um, I guess career research, and um, so if you are in the process of kind of figuring out what you want to do and you want more information about a particular career or you're not certain if something is well suited to you, I would be happy to help you out with, with that. I can kind of direct you and show you where to look for things uh, because a lot of people think they know how to research careers, but trust me, there are so many resources out there that you're probably not aware of. And I am because that's what I, that's part of my job and what I do. So I can help you with, um, you know, figuring out a direction or a career if that's something you are in the process of working on. Um, if you're having personal issues or problems that you just need to talk about, um, I'm here. Like, I'm a good listener. I don't mind taking time to listen to what's going on with you. Um, I don't usually offer advice unless you ask for it, but um, I know sometimes just you need to get something off your chest. Um, if you need guidance or help with any of the course material, I'm happy to help with that. Um, and I'm just here generally for any reason you might need me. Uh, don't think, don't be afraid to ask. I just want you to know I'm here, I'm accessible, I'm willing, and um, and I'm happy to sit down with any of you. And the, peop the students who tend to um, get in touch with me earlier in the semester tend to be the most successful students in the class because... Um, Part of being successful in school is engagement, you know, being engaged. And one of the things that helps students engage uh, with their coursework, with the college, with their teacher and everything is to have a, a personal meeting with an instructor. And so if you feel like, you know, as you get to know me through my lectures and you kind of see what sort of instructor I am, um, hopefully you'll feel comfortable coming to me and talking to me about some of the things that you're working on. Um, I'm happy to just listen and I'm happy to be supportive and helpful. Um, I'm also available if you need help with something like letters of recommendation um, or job references, that kind of thing. And so um, I would definitely stick my number in your phone now because you might not need me this semester, but you might need me after the semester's over when you're applying for a job or something like that. And I'm here. Once you're my student, you're always my student. Um, like for the rest of your life, if you need anything, even if I'm not teaching at Chafee anymore and you contact me, I will be there for you um, because that's the kind of person I am and that's sort of, you know, just the commitment I've made to my students is to help. I'm, I'm here to help you. Um, I know it can be difficult, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, where you're going uh, what you want to do with your life and, you know, how to be successful and how to stay motivated. And those are things that, you know, I struggled with too when I was younger. And honestly, sometimes I still struggle with those things. So I do understand. And I also do have some tools, tricks, strategies, etc., to help you with all those things. And I will be giving a lot of that information in the class, but I also am happy to provide additional assistance outside of class if you need that. All right, um, so that pretty much concludes the basic gist of the class, and I really strongly urge you to watch all the videos in the class um, because there's a lot of them, and they do take time to watch, but I would say, you know, watch them while you're doing other stuff, um, you know, watch them while you're exercising, listen to them in the car, that kind of thing. You don't necessarily need to watch everything, do you? You could just listen to what I'm saying. Um, as you're driving along or, you know, walking across the, you know, the parking lot <laughs> or whatever it is you're doing, um, you can just, you know, 
pop on one of these videos um, for the for the course and and listen and I think you'll get a lot out of them sometimes I can be a little bit long-winded sometimes I talk about stuff that I, I think some students are like well you don't need to say that that's irrelevant um, but I try to tell you about experiences that I've had that relate to the course material because I want you to hear um, I guess a real life situation that goes with that that you can relate to the um, the material for some people maybe they just want to be fed only the information that they need for the test but um, I like to give it a little more of a human touch I, I would say and add in uh, well this is something that happened with me that is relevant that you might find interesting and it might help you apply these concepts to your particular situation or your life um, the other thing I want to say because uh, I'm almost done here but I just was thinking um, some of the material is kind of, it's kind of, what's the right word? Childish? Childish? So this is why. So inside all of us is the inner child, right? We, we all started off as children. We all started off playing. We learned through exploration. We learned through play. And I don't care how old you are, you're still going to learn through play. So when, you have, when you're having fun, you're still learning right? And so I tried to give you guys material that is is full of games and fun and things that you're doing because not all of us just want to read a textbook and get the information that way. Some of us learn better by actually engaging physically with the material, manipulating things, using your hands, putting things together, taking things apart. So we're going to do some activities that may seem a little childish, but trust me, they do have a purpose and they are part of the curriculum in terms of they are there to teach you something. But if you're like, oh, I don't want to do this, you know, and you have a negative attitude about it, you're not going to have fun and so you're not going to learn as much. So I really invite you to keep an open mind and when you see, oh, we're going to be juggling today, just keep an open mind and juggle and have fun. Try to be a kid. Engage with the material like a child. Like, oh, I get to juggle. Cool. What does it mean? You know, try to think about the meaning of what you're doing. Try to figure out what I'm trying to teach you as you're doing these activities. You're going to be playing Jenga for sure. Study skills Jenga. You're going to be uh, doing paper toss, which is kind of like ring toss, um, but it's graduation paper toss. You're going to be doing juggling where literally you're juggling four balls. Um, you're going to be doing some fun things like that. And there's opportunities to do additional fun things along the way for extra credit as well. So um, those are all things that, you know, I kind of wish, like, if I was a student, I wish my teacher would have taught me in a way that was really fun like that. I, I kind of get bored of just like, oh, watch a lecture, take notes, take the test, read, 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 take the test. Um, you know, that, that's fine. But sometimes it's fun just to get in touch with your inner child and be a kid again and engage like in play like a child and just have a good time while you're learning because when you're done and you do get the lesson you're gonna always remember it because you're gonna be like oh yeah I remember that when I was juggling or I remember that when I played study skills Jenga or I remember that when I played paper toss okay so that's why those things are that way and it's because I want you to have fun and I want you to enjoy yourself while learning okay um, that is everything that I have for you today and I just again want to say welcome and thank you so much for being here and I really look forward to getting to know each and every one of you this term in this very short eight week period and just know that all the assignments that I have for you are there because I want you to be successful and again the more assignments there are the more opportunities for success alright bye guys have a good rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video